Hi, I'm Dr. Dan Rubin, and I'm here with Ad Hoc with a Doc, your Facebook Live talk show, talking about interesting events in medicine. We're here today with a friend and colleague, Dr. Gordon Grotto. We're here in Scottsdale, Arizona, and we're going to talk about radiation oncology and radiation therapy for people with cancer. So. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Thank Grotto. It's really an honor to be here. You're, we followed your work. It's been absolutely wonderful to see how many people that you help. And I know you are an international physician. Um, I'd, love to, I'd love for our listeners to hear about the work you do, both locally and internationally. And as a radiation oncologist, which is what you've practiced for your entire medical career, correct? Correct. Yeah. Tell us um, a little bit about... I know we only have 15 minutes, but tell us about the, where your different clinics are. We're in Scottsdale, Arizona. And this particular clinic is right around the corner from Naturopathic Specialists. So you and I have gotten to share many a patient together. I consider you a fantastic doctor, somebody who has tremendous care and compassion for the people that they treat, that you treat, but also a friend and a colleague. And I really appreciate being able to talk to you collegially and um, you know about patients. Tell us about some of your other locations, because I'm fascinated by them. Well, we have um, <clears throat> our second office is in Glendale, Arizona. Okay. Uh, and so we've been in Glendale and Scottsdale uh, since probably 1999, uh, 1989. The 1999. 1999, um, okay. We... Uh, at that point in time, I was also doing a lot of brachytherapy or putting radioactive seeds or pellets into tumors. So wait, directly you put the seed that has radiation into the tumor? Into the tumor. Okay. It's, it's a way of giving higher doses of radiation. structures because the radiation is very low energy and when I was doing that we opened up a clinic in uh, university or in, in uh, state of Washington in Seattle okay, okay. Uh, one in Des Moines Iowa and then I got recruited to go to University of Minnesota and I worked okay. there for about 13 years uh, meanwhile we we were asked to help build clinics outside the United States and I'd been doing that for many years going around the world teaching brachytherapy, uh, open, but opened up a clinic that we now run in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, okay. uh, second in Chihuahua, Mexico, and then we were invited to a third in uh, El Salvador. And the most recent one that's pending is in Costa Rica. Costa Rica. So you've essentially brought this higher tech, lower toxicity, more specific type of radiation therapy to regions that otherwise didn't or wouldn't have it. Had you not correct, that. correct. Wonderful. And are you an early adopter of this brachytherapy? It's it actually you know brachytherapy has been around a long time okay. mainly because the in the old days you could not give enough radiation from outside the body okay. to treat the cancer and so you had to try to find better ways. Now the technology has changed and we have the ability to give better radiation, but that technique of doing uh, very specific, very localized, and curative radiation into tumors, um, we were introduced to this technique. Um, by a doctor in Seattle, Washington, Hakan Ragda, uh, who had developed a technique for prostate, a new technique using okay. ultrasound and flu ultrasound. We introduced fluoroscopy to that. And so with ultrasound and fluoroscopy, we could more accurately place the seeds in the prostate and resulted in a program that was very successful, not just for early stage, but for advanced and even recurrent cancers. Okay. Let's, I really want to talk about the difference in techniques, and especially for the listeners out there, some who have family members that have gotten radiation, maybe some people who are looking to get radiation but haven't yet received it or have had radiation. But I think first, let's dig into it. What, how does radiation therapy actually work? Well, radiation is an invisible beam of energy that mm -hmm. passes through tissue. Uh, depending on the type of radiation, uh, if it's low energy, we have to actually implant it with seeds or pellets. But most of the radiation is now is done from outside the body where a beam is, is, is directed toward the patient. Now what makes radiation now better than it was before is our ability to localize radiation. We use uh, things like PET scans, CT scans, MRs to a better identify it and then the radiation is directed at that area by computer. Uh, more imp most importantly to treat the cancer but almost as importantly to protect all the structures that surround it. 
and so we can give a very high curative dose. To protect the rectum, the bladder, or other structures that may be around. Which it. means less side effects to the patient. Exactly. Better tolerance. They stay on course, and they don't have as many, you know, sort of lasting fibrotic type Correct. side effects. Correct. Um, how, there's different types of machines. There's different types of techniques. How does one determine the protocol? And I have to say too, with observing you and knowing what I know about radiation therapy, there's a lot of physics and mathematics that goes on behind the scenes, isn't there? So it's a not lot. just like, let's just give somebody radiation, but there is a very intense planning process too. Uh, yeah, again, w what determines the radiation, radiation again, killing the cells in, in tissue. And it can kill normal cells and, and cancer cells. So we want to concentrate the highest dose of radiation in the tumor. And we use these imaging structures to do it. Um, we were the first, uh, our program was the first in Arizona and the Southwest to introduce image guided radiation therapy, where the machine very, very precisely adjusts for the, the mm -hmm. daily, day to day movement of a tumor within a patient. Uh, to Wait, why would, tum tum why would tumors move within a patient? Because of the structures that surround it, okay. uh, breathing. The diaphragm moving okay. up and down can move a tumor. How much gas is in the rectum or stool or how full the bladder is, all those structures can move it. The old technology of radiation would plan on a patient and they'd put marks on the skin, mm -hmm. tattoo it, and they precisely treat those spots on the skin. And but not the, change the protocol. And they wouldn't change it. Okay. And so the tumor could move a great deal. Our treatment program actually... You mean the tumor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but you mean for our listeners out there, because this is an important point. You mean the tumor can move a great deal the next by the next day or within that treatment period? Both. Both on accommodate that by trying to put fiducial markers, little little oh, metal right. spots inside patients. But the problem is is that when the when the, the tumor moves, it's not just moving one direction. It may be accommodates for all that and allows us then to adjust the treatment roll kit jaw like a pilot would to make sure that we're treating it every day. If not, if the tumor has moved too much, we can accommodate for that right then. So image guided radiation therapy is it, you can change based on the day or within the treatment to deliver the most amount of radiation to the part, the critical part of the tumor, which then can decrease side effect and improve outcome and results. Exactly, because again, sometimes if you don't have that technology, you have to put margins around the tumor, margins around what you're doing, and so you're treating much, much more normal structures. I just saw a patient today that had a very, uh, very moderate sized brain tumor, mm -hmm. And during the course of therapy, we've now observed that the, the mass has gotten smaller. So we stopped treatment. Okay. We've made the fields smaller to accommodate that. So again, we're protecting normal tissue and then treating the tumor to a higher dose. Very important. And so does that matter in the type of machines that you have? Are there different types of radiation machines out there that give radiation therapy, but some may have image guided and some may not? It, it does. What happened was uh, even sometimes the insurance companies even uh, mandate what, what they will or will not do and will not pay okay. for. We made the decision that the level of accuracy, the le level of precision was so high that all of our machines are image guided. Okay. So that we have that to offer the patients, period. Because there's only there's only the right way to do it and you want to avoid anything else. And those machines that you have here in Scottsdale or in Glendale, um, do you have similar machines in Latin America? Yes, in fact, we we actually even had to form a, an importation company to get the machine into Mexico. Really? Uh, well, the problem was that a lot of the vendors that were selling equipment mm -hmm. marked the machine prices up five times, and it made it impossible to get modern technology. So by doing that, we were able to get it into Mexico and Central America. Are the machines that you used to use when you were starting out in your career versus the higher tech machines now, are you seeing a tremendous difference in patient compliance and results and reduction in side effect across the board? I'd probably change it, say, in different order. I'd okay. say results, results, higher success rate, fewer side effects, mm -hmm. fewer risk of complications, and uh, as res and then more opportunities to treat patients. Before, yes. it was either 
you tried to cure a patient, and that was a very few percentage of patients, mm -hmm. and you tried to palliate or slow, slow up a tumor. Now we're curing more, we're palliating more, and in the middle group, which is the most interesting, at bay, if you will, so that the patient has normal, longer life expectancy and, and uh, fewer side effects. So, for our audience out there, what, what's the difference between producing a curative protocol versus a palliative protocol? And what does palliation actually mean? Well, curative, the type of cancer that you have, the location of the tumor, mm -hmm. curative, giving a high, as high dose of radiation that's necessary. Now again, we want to give the minimum dose that will bring the maximum result okay. with the fewest side effects and complications. That's five weeks, eight weeks of radiation, depending on the type of tumor and okay. depending on the dose. Sometimes we can give the radiation dose in a shorter period of time okay. if it's not next to a uh, critical structure and then uh, treat it more easily for the patient. Let's talk about that. Some people ask, why can't you just give one radiation treatment and that's it? Why do you have to fraction out or do multiple treatments over the course? Is it dependent upon, you said something about the location and a critical structure. To our audience, what does that mean? Because I, I, I get that question a lot, and I'm obviously not a radiation oncologist, um, about that. Well, that's a really good question because the, the, the amount of radiation that we use, the, the amount of treatments that we use um, is really... Uh, it, again, if if you have a certain type of tumor that um, is adjacent to a, uh, a really dose critical area, you can't treat it in one shot. What's a dose critical area? Uh, dose spinal cord, okay, uh, okay. heart, okay. lung, uh, bowel, bladder. And, and you have to go little by little. We then fractionate it, and by okay. fractionating, we get two two benefits. One, okay. it's a cumulative effect, and so. We, we damage the cells as they're cycling, and that's actually how radiation works, okay. hitting the cancer cell during the, the phase where they're most sensitive. Okay. The other part is, as we fractionate it, as the tumor gets smaller, we can then make the fields of radiation smaller and then have fewer side effects yeah. for the patient. Let's talk about that, because that's the side effect is really the juncture where you and I can meet in the middle, because we have protocols in naturopathic oncology in our clinic that we where we've co-managed patients quite a bit. Um, what are what are the main causes of side effects that you see in people undergoing radiation therapy? Well, the bit the worst side effect is the cancer, and that's mm -hmm. that typically is causing a problem for the patient. And so we're trying to uh, damage the cancer cell to eliminate okay. that. But the other side effects of the of the normal structures. Um, the bowel. In the old days, we used to use medicine to, pre to treat diarrhea all the time mm -hmm. because we couldn't protect the bowels. Now mm -hmm. I can't even I can't even tell you when the last time I wrote a prescription for a diarrhea medicine mm -hmm. because it doesn't happen. The same with bladder. We used to cause a lot of damage to the bladder. We can protect it now. So oh. we're seeing with better accuracy, more precision. That's totally avoided. Yeah. Very interesting. And we see some people who are on longer protocols who might have more fractionations over a longer period of time. Uh, they tend to get fatigued. Um, and some of these people have rolled out of chemotherapy into radiation therapy, so they've really been undergoing you know, long treatment plans. Um, at naturopathic specialists, we tend to uh, really enjoy co-managing people going through radiation therapy. We see radiation therapy as an opportunity to really demonstrate the dying tumor to the immune system. And so if we can really give treatments that can boost the immune system while you're giving a treatment that is killing the tumor, then we can help them. It's almost like an auto-vaccination, if you will. And I've noticed that some of the inflammatory effects that come from the radiation, which which is, I mean, radiation at the end of the day is a pro-oxidant. And a lot of people have heard the word antioxidant or pro-oxidant. And so some of that that pro-oxidation or inflammatory impact can decrease the immune response. And so it's like the side effect creates an obstruction between the dying cancer cell and the immune system cell. And if we can remove that, we can, we can get that immune system to recognize that. And at the same time, part of that enhanced immune response also decreases some of the, the burden that people feel of fatigue and inflammation. And so I think that's where you can have some lasting effect too. 
I, you did a very good job of, of explaining that because mm -hmm. it, the uh, uh, the ability of of, of amplif amplification of the immune system because again damaging cells and so we're producing a lot of fractions of DNAs or fractions of cells that that the body could then go after and attack and as it develops uh, immunity against that mm -hmm. uh, and sensitivity against that then it starts attacking the tumor as well so that helps us a great deal what you're doing the second thing is helping the patient recover mm -hmm. recover from the side effects of the radiation the fatigue tiredness which are kind of the more difficult ones and I think, frankly, you know, we've seen through with many of your patients a faster recovery time, returning back to normal Wonderful. quicker than they uh, would normal by just uh, time involved. Wonderful. Well, I, this has been great. I really enjoyed sitting here and talking with you. I know our audience is going to enjoy this. Um, thanks for joining us on the show. Well, thank you. And, you know, as I, I owe Terry Bugno, Dr. Bugno in, uh, Bugno. in Chicago, a yeah. great deal of thanks because, you know, he's the one that told me that you were the best out here in the Southwest. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful.